Hello, welcome back to the channel, and today we're talking about the best edge rushers and linebackers in the country. I kind of have it as a same position here. Um, I know there's not much crossover in terms of like the interior linebackers, but a lot of these guys are outside the linebackers, edge rushers. It's kind of a hybrid position now. Like, I mean, technically speaking, Will Anderson or Aiden Hutchinson can be seen as an outside linebacker when obviously they're more of an edge rushing type. So that's why I have them combined here in this list. Number 10 here, we have Jack Sawyer. Now, I had a different Ohio State guy here initially, I had JT Tuamalu, but after looking back through all of his stats, he had you know a 93.5 grade in uh, his one game that he played against Penn State. Obviously, he played more than one game, but it was just one game where he was unbelievable, and other than that, he was relatively underwhelming. So uh, Jack Sawyer apparently has been doing better in practices, so I have Jack Sawyer taking the cake here at number 10. Um, he's one of the bigger recruits they've had in a while. Five-star guy coming in from Ohio. Last year, he only had four and a half sacks and 10 tackles, but I think he can definitely upgrade that. He was 6'4", 265, and um, probably he's going to have a big game week one against Indiana where Ohio State is going to blow him out. But, um, yeah, he's a junior from Pickerington, Ohio, so hometown guy, and um, I think that he's going to take the next step that people think JTT was going to take. So, hence for that, he's already taken his spot in my list, and I think he'll overtake him for the best uh, defensive prospect or defensive player on the Ohio State defense, like the edge linebacker room here um, going forward in the next season. Number nine, we have uh, Laitu Latu from the UCLA Bruins. Um he missed two seasons at, uh, at at Washington after he was forced to medically retire with a neck injury. He uh, then got a second opinion and got second life down um, at the UCLA Bruins. So he was a Washington Husky. He's now down at UCLA. Had a great season last year. Second in pressures at 64. Uh, he had third in pressure rate, 21.7 on snaps. And uh, he was tied for third in sacks with 12. So he was a highly productive, and he could have had his career ended. Um, he's got a lot of pro upside. He's a, you know, even though he's a bit older, obviously missing two seasons, he's probably going to play one more year here and then and then go to the pros. He's gotten first round grades as of now, and um, people like a lot about it. He's got really good pass rushing moves. Um, you know, he's got good skill when it comes to manipulating the offensive line and getting inside, getting to the pass rusher. Um, his run defense is not good, kind of like a lot of these guys on this list are going to have bad run defense, but they're more rushing the passer type. So. That's kind of where we're at in the NFL anyway is, you know, you draft these edges high. It's, it's one of the most high-valued positions now in sports. I mean, you can think about it with they'd go quarterback, you know, as goes high, offensive tackles go high, and then really it's edges and then receivers. And you think of the first round, I think it's majority of that. So that's what we have for right now. And uh, Laitu Latu is, um, you know, good on him that he was able to come back from a serious injury and technically be medically retired to now – be likely a first round draft pick, if not higher, depending on uh, how he's going to be doing over in the UCLA this year. So that's why he comes at number nine. Number eight, we've got the first true linebacker of this uh, video. We have we got Barrett Carter of the Clemson Tigers. Now, he's really good. Um, there's another one of his teammates in the same position room guys above him on this board, but. This is the the strength of this team is going to be their D tackles and their linebackers. Like I was just talking about how um, there wasn't really um, with Jack Sawyer and Laitu, there wasn't much of uh, of playing both sides of the ball in terms of pass rush and, and pass coverage and, and, and being able to rush the passer and stop the run. Barrett checks all three boxes. He's a good run defense guy, good at getting after the pass rusher when he's allowed, and great in coverage. Um, he was, yeah, he's a sophomore last year, junior this season. Um, he was 75 plus grades as a run defender, a pass defender, and a uh, in coverage. So really good at all three. I mean, again, getting that high in all three is one of three guys in the country. So that's elite company right away. He combined seven incompletions, and interceptions, and uh, it was most among linebackers. So. He's just an all-around guy, totally able to cover it all. Obviously, he's covered up in a bit by um, what you know the guy above him is, and he gets a little bit of highlights taken away from him. But he does a lot, man, and, and he's going to be a really good piece that helps Clemson take the next step this year, in my opinion, and, and get into the college world playoff. But overall, this guy's an absolute menace, and um, if he gets elite in one of these things, he could be an all-pro type guy. But even if not, he'll be a plug-and-play linebacker the next level, one of those guys that you're like, you know, when it's like, oh, I don't really know him, but number, you know, blank is really good. So I think he's got a long career ahead of him on Sundays. 
Um, but that's why he comes. Number seven is Michael Williams. Now, he was a freshman last year, so he's probably the youngest guy on the list. He's going to be a sophomore in this upcoming season. He had a 75.9 run defense grade, which is fourth among SEC edge defenders, and obviously led all freshmen. Um, he had six sacks, which is the most among a true freshman, and um, he had 33 pressures, which is the second most. Uh, that's crazy. I mean, this guy was doing it all. I'm one of the best defenses in the country. He just walked in. Um, there's one viral clip, I'll make sure I put it in here, where he destroys an offensive t lineman from uh, Ohio State. I don't remember if it was Paris Johnson. I think it might have been, but it was one of the top guys. One, you know, a, a drafted guy was playing on Sundays. Got absolutely lit up by this little freshman. So I oh, shouldn't say little, but young freshman. And now he's going to come in. He's going to have all the free reign he wants. He's going to be probably the best player on that defensive front. And um, I think that's going to make him one of the most imposing guys on what I think is the best defensive line in the country. And, um, yeah, they're loaded at every position as always on the defense, especially with Georgia. But he's probably the best guy at his position out of those guys. So he's going to be the, the name you hear a lot this year and especially next year when he's finally draft eligible in 2024. So in the 2025 draft, to be saying, saying it correctly. So um, Mikhail does, again, checks all the boxes in terms of pass rush and stuff. I mean, if he doesn't need coverage because he's more of a D end rushing guy. So um, watch out for him this year. And if I'm an SEC quarterback, uh, good luck. And a lot of offensive line coaches are ripping their hair out, if applicable, um, for uh, him when he's running downhill at their guys. So watch out for Mikhail Williams. Obviously watch out for Georgia is implied, but this is one of the biggest names that you should know on that Georgia defense. Up next, number six, we have Chop Robinson, um, formerly of Maryland as a freshman, transferred to Penn State last season and had a breakout year, and now looks to break out even further and find himself high on draft boards uh, out of the edge position. He led all Power 5 edge defenders in a 90.6 in overall grade and a 90. 2.4 pass rushing grade um, he was the fourth most valuable edge rusher according to pff wins above metric so pff has all those stats right now um he tore up auburn he was doing his thing on that one that's kind of where the stage we're like okay who's this big guy because again penn state they don't have the names in the back so it's like who's this guy so you found out he was chop robinson the guy from maryland and um he's gonna be one of the best defenders in the country um he's the highest big 10 yeah highest big 10 guy well current big 10 teams but highest big 10 guy on this loss i think he's probably the best probably yeah i would say definitely the best edge or linebacker in the big 10 and um i think that that's gonna make him you know and a force he's a bit smaller but undersized but that speed makes him one absolutely a nightmare defending against tackles so big body tackles watch out don't be flat-footed against this guy um, he's going to be pulling on every move in the book to get past you and sack your quarterback. And uh, I think he will, except Michigan. But um, in every other game, I think it's going to be an absolute nightmare. Like you think of uh, the Penn State-Ohio State game, the Ohio State biggest question outside of quarterback, or maybe even in front of it even, is their tackles. Um, and uh, you better make sure you have a good tackle when Chop Robinson comes to town because otherwise whew, he could take over and win that game. So He's the type of player, too, that can be that big that big edge rusher that just game wrecks and, and, and takes it over. Kind of like what happened with JTT in the second half of their game last year. But I think he could definitely be a game wrecker this year. And similar to Mikhail Williams, that should be a guy you circle. You know, you sit down, you're, you're board reading, and you're looking at it. You're like, all right, who's up this week? Who are we facing? Oh, Penn State, but uh, Chad Robinson should be the next words out of your mouth if you're if you're on the offensive line or even a quarterback. It's like, that's the guy we got to watch out for. Him and Kalen King, if they're ever on the same side, watch out, man. So uh, that Penn State defense is, is going places. So don't sleep on the Nittany Lions this year. I know I'm not. At number five, we have Braylon Trice from the Washington Huskies. Um, they, since 2019, there has been a, a leader in pressures, right? The last three seasons, it's been Will Anderson. Except last year, it was Braylon Trice. And if you're doing something better than Will Anderson in college, there is a reason why, and it's because you're a damn good player. Um, he had 70 pressures last year. He's the most productive pass rusher. He was a redshirt sophomore last year, so despite only being his second season playing, he'll be draft eligible and is projected to go quite high. I believe he's the third or fourth edge off the board. He had a pass rush win rate of 29.5 and was second in pressures at 22.4, according to PFF. All of these stats are PFF, and a lot of this stuff I'm reading from is PFF, so just shout out them in general. But yeah, this guy, again, 
is going to be doing a lot of things out there. And, and it's when you think of these Washington teams, and not even just Washington, but just overall the Pac-12, you don't think of defense. But there's always an edge or two out there that's doing his thing. Like last year, it was Tuli Tulipolu, I think that's how you pronounce it, Tuli. The guy that's in the Chargers now from USC, he led the country in sacks. And I think that Braylon Trice could do a similar thing. Go out there and lead the country in sacks, lead in some major stack category, get you drafted high. But sitting at a 6'4", 270, I mean, he's going to be an absolute freak of nature. He's got quick comparisons to uh, Miles Murphy, but you know if he gets a bit more quick twitch, a bit more uh, things like that, he's going to be an absolute menace. But you know he's a game wrecker again, and it's similar similar for all of these guys. He's a guy you're like, whoa, this guy can win you games, and he definitely think will at least one or two. And with how crazy that those uh, those offenses are out there in the Pac-12, he's going to be able to come in there and stop one of these crazy quarterbacks. Like if uh, you know if he's you know, rushing the passer and Caleb Williams rolls out, he can shed the lock and, and, and track him down because he's got that speed. So um, I, I think that he's very high on my list at number five, and um, he's the top Pac-12 guy in the conference. So I think he's probably the best uh, edge defender just based on what I'm thinking. So that's why uh, Brillian Trice finds himself at number five. At number four, we have Dallas Turner from Alabama, the heir apparent to Will Anderson. He was the guy when you're watching Will Anderson tape, you're like, whoa, who's this guy that keeps getting the pass rusher? That's him. Um, one of his best highlights, unfortunately, was an injury um, when he injured uh, Quinn Ewers, but he lit him up. It was a legal play, just landed on him, but you, know, you hate to see the injury happen, but it was a great play by uh, Dallas Turner. The last two seasons in his career, he's a junior now, but his first two years, he combined for 14 sacks, which is second to most among anybody coming back uh, for two colleges this year in the Power Five, so... He's already an elite company. He's going to probably be one of the best defenders in the SEC, if not the best edge defender in the SEC. I would say he's going to be the best edge defender in the SEC. But um, overall, this guy is all over the field. You know, he can drop back in coverage if needed. But I think that he's going to be a guy that's going to get a lot of Will Anderson comparisons, purely because the same team and they, they were teammates for two seasons. But I, I believe that you know playing with a guy like that, you probably learn so much from him in practice, watching him in tape, and even playing alongside of him, you're going to learn a lot from him. I'm not saying he's the next Will Anderson, but I'm going to say that he's going to be a pretty pretty highly sought-after guy, and I will be surprised if we don't see him under pick 20 um, and, and probably in the top 10. I think it's going to be him or the guy right in front of him are going to be in the top 10 there. So um, that's what I all I got for uh, Dallas Turner. Not, not too much to go into because he wasn't the man last year, but he's going to be the man this year on that defense. And, and if you know, the way people think Alabama is going to win this year is going to be through elite defense and grounding and pounding. The elite defense part is him and Kool-Aid McKinstry. Those two together are one of the best edge and corner combos in the country. So those two are going to be doing a lot of work this year, and I'm, I'm super excited to see how it turns out. Number three, we have Jeremiah Trotter Jr. out of Clemson, um, son of the former All-Pro linebacker, obviously, Jeremiah Trotter as well. Um, he is the one of the best linebackers in the country, if not the best. Um, he had a pick six against Rattler in their game against South Carolina. Um, he is going to be a junior this season, and he's already going to be almost guaranteed the top true linebacker off the board. Um, linebackers typically don't go in the first round. I know we saw Jack Campbell last year, but the traditional linebackers are he's going he's gonna to be up there quick. Um, he'll definitely be late first round. I would be surprised if not. Um, really good passing coverage guy. He was the only power five linebacker with 80 plus grades as a pass rusher and in coverage. So kind of what we're talking about with uh, Barrett, where he could run stop as well. He's not as nearly as good of a run stopper, but he's more elite at the pass coverage and the pass rushing thing. So you can learn the run defense, I'm, I'm sure, at the next level, but he's got all the intangibles, man. He was second in the country with those positions as a only with a passer rating allowed of 42.9 and open target rate of 47.6. I mean, those numbers are like what you would expect from a good corner. And this is coming from a linebacker who can get after the passer. So he's got a bit of a hybrid model after him. You could call him like a poor man's Jabril Peppers if you want. Um, and not by poor man, I mean anything insulting. I think he's obviously better than Jabril Peppers. But um, Jeremiah is going to be doing his thing this year for the Clemson Tigers. And a lot, yeah, him and Barrett Carter together is a perfect duo. Their ability to be able to cover passes, you know, there's not the strongest corner group at Clemson, but you, when your two linebackers are some of the best pass coverage guys in the country, you can probably line up in the slot at some points and get crazy. But we'll see how Dabo and those guys line them up this year. But Jeremiah Trotter, not a Heisman guy, but he could be, you know, obviously a Butkus finalist uh, along with the, the guy that leads this list. But I do believe that Jeremiah Trotter combined with Mike Barrett Carter is the best linebacking duo in the country. And I don't think it's particularly close and the draft the boards would agree with me. So up next, we've got Jared verse, the edge rusher 
from Florida State. People were stunned this dude came back because I think he was mocked first round. Like I know the Jets were talking about taking him late first round if they even got to him there. And it's crazy. Yeah, the saying here, top 20 pick, and they said he'd come back. So I don't know if he had some bad intel or somebody said that he should come back, but I don't, I don't know why because if you have first round draft grade ever in your life, you got to go. I'm, I'm sure everyone on this channel hopefully watched the uh, LSU Florida State game last year, but they kept talking about, oh, there was this kid from Albany that transferred, blah, 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 Jared Verse. Yeah, he's an absolute freak of nature, big guy. Um, he was a redshirt sophomore last year. He's a junior this year. So his first year really at, at, at the D1 level the last two years uh, was last year and this year, obviously. Um, he had a 24.4 pass rush win rate, which is fourth among Power 5 edge defenders, and his 10 tackles for loss was tied for sixth. So not only is he blowing up plays, he's able to stop the run with his tackles for loss. And, um, again, he's an absolute force. I mean, he would have gone, again, top 20 last year. But he decided to come back, and he's looking to go top five, top ten now. I think he could be most likely the first defensive player off the board. Probably, you know, maybe Dallas Turner if he has a better season. But Verse ticks all the boxes, and he's an NFL player playing in college. And usually that's what we say among, like, the freakish of freaks of sophomores and, and freshmen. But he was draft eligible, and he decided to come back and uh, prove himself, I guess, more. But, yeah. I mean, this guy is going to be one of the first names off the board, Detroit, this uh, this spring. So look to see him light up again against LSU to open the season on national television, and uh, he's a must-watch guy for me. There's, like, I would go out of my way to watch the Florida State defense just to see what he does. That, that's my recommendation to you guys. So at number one, we have the freak of nature. That is Harold Perkins Jr. of the LSU Tigers. One of his highlights that they have in him is like he has Lane Kiffin talking about him. Like in the first of the highlights I was cutting up to put over this video right now, it was just Lane Kiffin being like, this guy's unbelievable, blah, 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 blah. You can just watch the game against Arkansas where he went absolutely mental. He was a true freshman. He led all people in the country with the 91 pass rushing grade. I hope that they can convert him into like this edge type. This is kind of the inspiration for the thing because he's a linebacker by trait, but he's a pass rusher. And he had uh, 18 quarterback knockdowns last year, so like sacks plus hits plus, you know, you know, little bumps or edged bruises. And uh, he was second in the country for forced fumbles. Uh, he had four of them. He has a Michael Parsons level comparisons everyone's given him. So like that sort of like absolute freak game wrecker edge thing. And uh, he can play as linebacker or an edge. So um, I would hope they put him more as an edge, you know, play more of a defensive end type thing this year. I know we saw B.J. Ojolari as well get drafted in like, what, the second round? um off of that and so perkins is you know him on steroids so um he's just flying over the field and he's again he's one of those guys when i was watching that um arkansas game i think I by accident i don't even know why i had it on um but i was like whoa this guy who the heck is this guy and that was when they had the full story on harold perkins about how much of a freak athlete he is and he would be one of the highest guys going in the draft in 2025 because he was only a freshman last year and he was starting for the LSU Tigers. And now he's going to be probably the captain of that defense as a junior or as a sophomore. And uh, 2025 draft, he's going to be, again, super high off the board. So him and Mikael Williams will be fighting for the top spot there. I'm, I'm pretty sure. So you might even get Heisman sniffs. He's that good of a defensive prospect. But, again, he'll be up there for the Buckus Award and, and probably will win it. And he's going to be definitely the best underclassman in the country in terms of defense. So... Um, let me know down below if I missed anyone, if you agree with my list or not. And um, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And we'll see you guys all next time. Peace.